Okay, welcome back to science. We're going to hopefully be finishing out our unit today. <clears throat> Job number one today is you are going to be listening or watching. Um, we're going to be talking about how to pr protect our spheres. So, um, this discovery education video is on air pollution, um, which is the atmosphere. Um, and I want to, I want you guys to think about how people can help this situation. How could you as a kid help this situation? Maybe now and possibly in the future. All right, go ahead and watch. Oh. Air. We can't see it, taste it, or smell it. Air. And we can't even we feel can't it see unless it. the wind is blowing. Or smell but just like water, and we can't even feel air is essential is to life on Earth. But just like At water, normal temperatures, air is, air is a mixture of several different colorless, odorless gases. It air is 78% nitrogen, represented by the letter N. It is a little less than 21% oxygen, represented, by, represented the by the letter O, a little less than and air also contains about 1% of certain other o, gases, including carbon dioxide, about represented by CO2, that is made from two parts of oxygen, O, by the and just a single part of the CO2, element, carbon, C. That is made the Earth's two greatest of natural cycle, the carbon cycle, part of depends the on carbon dioxide C. obtained from the air which is the same One gas the that makes the bubbles in carbonated cycle. soft drinks. The carbon cycle depends on carbon dioxide the carbon cycle is from actually the air, based on which is the same quite gas that makes the bubbles but complementary in complementary biological drinks. processes. Respiration the carbon cycle and is actually based on two quite that work together to support life on Earth. Biological processes. The first process in a carbon cycle, called photosynthesis, depends on sunlight. To support life on Earth. The work to make the first from process life. in the carbon and cycle, and it's a process that is only carried out by depends plants on and algae, because they are the only the creatures that can capture the energy of sunlight and use light. it to make food. And it's a process that is only During carried out by plants and During photosynthesis, carbon dioxide from because the air are the and only ordinary water can are combined of to make carbohydrates, to make food. which are energy-rich food materials that include the sugars that sweeten these from cherries. The air and ordinary so it's photosynthesis that makes our crops grow and that puts which energy are energy in the food we materials eat. That include the sugars that sweeten these cherries. So it's photosynthesis that makes our crops grow and that puts energy in the food we eat is released back into the atmosphere whenever it occurs. In fact, all of the oxygen in our atmosphere is produced by the photosynthesis that... And since photosynthesis completely depends on the carbon dioxide in our air, it's easy to see why and it's since so important too. Since completely depends on the carbon dioxide in our air, it's easy to see why main process so of work in the Earth's carbon cycle is called respiration. And it is the, the other exact main process of work in the Earth's carbon cycle is called respiration from the air. And the carbohydrates the that were produced during photosynthesis are combined in inside of living cells oxygen to make water. Air. And as well as carbon dioxide gas, which is released back into the air. Inside of living cells Respiration is the main way that the well energy stored in carbohydrates is freed is up so that living things air. can use it to power their life processes. Is really important for example, the main way respiration needs to take place in order for this giraffe to get so energy from the leaves he is eating. That's the reason he needs to breathe example, in oxygen and why he is breathing out carbon dioxide gas and water vapor. He is eating. So as you can That's see, the, reason the carbon cycle, basic synthesis, and respiration work together to capture and release energy. And how they make so it possible see, for certain the chemical elements essential to life, such as carbon, and oxygen, and hydrogen, together to move to back and forth and release between energy. the air, living things, and the rest of the environment. Essential to life. 
such as carbon, oxygen, the nitrogen, nitrogen cycle is another key life supporting process the air, that depends on the gas things, from our air. And the rest of the environment. Nitrogen is another one of those elements that living creatures just can't do without. The nitrogen because, for example, is another it's key DNA, life supporting process the material that, that directs the, gas the activities of cells. Nitrogen is nitrogen is one of those elements that living creatures proteins, just too, can't do without, such as those that are needed to because, make muscles example, and blood cells. It's in DNA. Oddly enough, that even though more than three quarters of, of the Earth's air is pure nitrogen, nitrogen gas, is key hardly any living things are able to use it in that form. That are needed to make muscles and that's why and in our cells. environment, the nitrogen Oddly gas enough, from air even is though changed into something that creatures can actually use. In fact, that's Hardly what the nitrogen cycle is all about. In that form. And that's why in our environment, the nitrogen cycle the nitrogen starts when one cell nitrogen-fixing bacteria that live in the soil use. and in the roots of certain plants that's what the remove nitrogen, nitrogen cycle gas from all the air about. and combine it with hydrogen to make a usable the nitrogen, nitrogen compound called one cell ammonia. Nitrogen -fixing bacteria then that plants the absorb soil the ammonia the from the soil, plants allowing them for their life activity. And, combine and when animals eat plant materials, they obtain usable nitrogen from them. Then the the nitrogen cycle is completed the soil, when decomposing and denitrifying bacteria cause the decay of dead plants and, and animals, animals eat plant which releases nitrogen gas back into the air once again. The nitrogen cycle is completed. Now that we've learned what depends on the gases in the air, let's look at several different types of air pollution and, animals and find animals out how they are affecting life on our planet. Back into the, air once again. the first type of air pollution that we're going now to examine is called particulate on the pollution, in the air. particulates, which are tiny bits of burned, pollution material that float around in the air. That inhale too many particulates can develop serious health problems, the type of air especially of the lungs to and heart, is called just like cigarettes which occurs naturally on Earth Smoke when volcanoes erupt, or when lightning causes forest fires. But today, most of this kind of pollution comes from People human activity, too many such as burning diesel fuel, gasoline, problems, oil, coal, and, and wood. And heart. Just particulate like pollution is at its do. worst in big cities, particulate especially in the world's developing countries, when where controlling air pollution is when frequently viewed as being less fires. important than economic today, growth. Most of this kind of pollution particulates comes from can travel cities, great distances, such as burning which shows that air pollution is truly a global oil, problem. Coal and wood. In fact, black soot from coal-fired power plants in, in China occasionally blows all the way across countries, the Pacific where pollution on the west coast of the United States. As being less important than economic growth. Kind of air pollution Particulates can travel great distances, which shows that air pollution is truly a global problem. These pollutants are in sulfur dioxide, soot or SO2, power plants and nitrogen China dioxide, blows or NO2. The across the Pacific Ocean when these chemicals mix with water vapor in the clouds, the, coast of the, the rain that States. falls from them sometimes has so much acid in it that it's as sour as vinegar. A and second that's kind why of air it's known as acid rain. Oxides that are produced acid rain when fossil fuels trees are burned or slow their growth these over very large areas of land. Or and it can even cause stones to erode. Dioxide. Or when NO2. acid rain falls on lakes and when streams, these chemicals mix they can with water become so acidic clouds, that aquatic rangers like fish will die. Has so much acid in it, Fortunately, it's as sour installing as vinegar, pollution control devices that remove the chemical pollutants from factory and vehicle acid emissions rain really helps reduce trees, the problem of acid rain. Over very large areas of land. And An air pollutant called ozone to is found in the clouds of smog that often hang over big cities. Ozone so consists of three oxygen units like linked together, and that's why it's represented by the formula O3. Ozone is created when chemical pollutants from the burning of fossil fuels combine in the presence of sunlight. Acid rain. Too much ozone in the air is harmful to living things. An air pollutant it can burn people's ozone lungs. Is found in the it can damage plants. That ozone can even cause rubber cities. tires to fall apart. Ozone consists of three oxygen it's interesting to note together. that not all the and ozone in our atmosphere is a harmful pollutant. O3. Because there is actually is a protective ozone layer that surrounds our entire planet, many in the miles above the surface of the Earth where it Too much can't get into the air we breathe. To living things. This ozone layer is good lungs. because it absorbs it the sun's plants. damaging rays, the kind that cause sunburns and skin apart. cancer. 
It's About interesting 30 to years note ago, that not all the ozone in our atmosphere is a chemicals harmful used in spray cans and refrigerators are causing a hole to develop in the ozone layer, allowing many, many more of the sun's dangerous rays the to reach the Earth's surface, the especially at the South Pole. This ozone layer is good Today, because it absorbs the sun's most damaging rays. Today, these harmful chemicals are illegal in most, but not all, countries of the world. And skin cancer. The final About kind of air pollution ago, we're going to look at comes from greenhouse gases. Used in spray cans These are gases that keep some of the warmth of the sun from escaping back into space, similar to the way a blanket keeps warmth in our bed. To reach the Earth's surface. It may come as a surprise Pole. that the main greenhouse gas Today, is carbon dioxide, CO2, in most, which, as we have seen, is a natural ingredient of air that plays an important the role in supporting kind of life on Earth. Going to look at comes from the problem with carbon gases. dioxide isn't that it's These poisonous, are gases that keep it's that there is the just the too much of it in the atmosphere. In fact, to the a 30% increase in CO2 has occurred since the world's first big factories began to operate about two and a half centuries ago. Dioxide, CO2, All of the extra carbon dioxide in the seen, atmosphere has come mostly from the burning of fossil fuels an and from the burning of wood life on and farm fields too. The problem with carbon dioxide isn't that it's poisonous. It's Methane is, is the second major greenhouse in gas in our atmosphere. In fact, the chemical formula of methane is CH4, the which shows that it is one part carbon and four parts hydrogen. Ago. Methane is All produced the by the decay that occurs in, in places such as swampy wetlands and garbage dumps, and, and, and it's produced by the digestive processes of farm animals too. too. The natural gas we use for cooking and heating is mostly methane. Methane is, the second major greenhouse methane gas is a very atmosphere. powerful greenhouse gas, the chemical formula but it isn't affecting our environment is nearly as much as carbon dioxide. That is one part That's carbon because so much less of it is hydrogen. being released into our atmosphere. Methane is produced by the decay that occurs in places such as swampy wetlands and garbage dumps. Most it's scientists think that the extra greenhouse gases in the atmosphere will increase by one degree Fahrenheit the during the last century. And, heating is and scientists methane. predict that in Less air pollution is reduced during the early decades gas. of this century. But it isn't our planet's our environment environment to rise by between 2 and 11 degrees. That's because so much less of it the is being released The small temperature change that has already taken place is thought to be responsible for some of the climate-related changes that we are seeing today, Most such as more and heavier downpours of rain, are what shrinking glaciers, temperature to a rise in sea level, Fahrenheit during longer ice-free periods on oceans, and lakes, and rivers, and even heavier snowfall. Early decades of, this century, of course, no one knows exactly what will happen if the Earth's temperature keeps on rising. And 11 degrees. But most scientists think that in the, the years to come, that we will have more powerful storms, more tornadoes, for some of the worse droughts, changes that we are seeing more today, severe hurricanes, such as more and heavier flooding, downpours of rain, and greater shrinking loss of life. All of which are good reasons to get serious about reducing the emissions of greenhouse gases. Besides trying to cut sea emissions, scientists are also trying to find ways to actually remove some of the excess gas from the air. But most scientists For example, think that in the they've found come, that planting that trees have helps because trees absorb carbon dioxide from the air when they carry out photosynthesis. More severe hurricanes. Since most of our energy today comes from the burning of air-polluting fuels, one of the best ways to clean up our air is to switch over to alternative sources of energy that don't rely on burning anything, and if possible, that are renewable too, meaning that the energy they produce comes from natural sources that we'll never run out of. For example, because trees absorb wind power. Dioxide from the air the when movement they carry of air supplies the energy for wind power. As the wind blows, Since most of our the blades of the windmills turn the burning and electricity is generated. One of the best ways Since windmills make electricity without burning anything, alternative there is no air pollution. That don't rely and because on the wind blows anything. almost every day, and if wind possible, power is renewable too. too. Meaning that the hydroelectric power comes from natural sources. Running water supplies the energy for hydroelectric for power. Example, water wind rushing through dams like this one the causes huge generators to turn out power. electricity. As the wind blows, hydroelectric the power, of the wind just like turn, wind power, and electricity doesn't is cause generated. air pollution and is Since renewable. Since windmills make electricity without burning Nuclear anything, power. 
there is no air pollution. Atoms of uranium and fuel the nuclear wind power plant like this one. Wind power is renewable Uranium too. is the same material that is used to make atomic power. bombs. But at nuclear Rain power plants, supplies the, the explosive process is power. carefully controlled water so that electricity can be like made. One causes huge nuclear power to plants turn out don't electricity. cause air pollution and only release harmless power, steam into like the atmosphere. But because nuclear pollution, power depends on uranium renewable. fuel, which we will run out nuclear of someday, power. it's a non-renewable source uranium of energy. Fuel nuclear power plants like this solar one. power. Uranium the sun is the, is the source of energy for solar power. Atomic bombs. Solar panels the like these power convert sunlight the directly into electricity and are being used so more and more often today to supply power to nuclear homes power and buildings. Don't cause air While solar powered heaters like this one steam into capture the, the sun's energy and but use it to heat water. Depends on uranium solar fuel, energy is both non-polluting and renewable. It's a non-renewable source of energy. Geothermal power. power. Natural heat the sun from deep is the within the Earth supplies the energy for geothermal Solar power. panels like these the convert sunlight that directly into electricity. geysers and volcanoes erupt and, are and that causes water to boil up from the ground in hot springs. To homes and geothermal buildings. energy, While which is used both for heaters, heating like homes this and one, making electricity, the is renewable and non-polluting to too. Biofuels. Energy is both Biofuels are special fuels for vehicles that are made from certain plants that are raised on farms. Power. The main biofuel is ethanol, and it's in most of the gasoline the we pump into our cars. Power. In the this USA, the most ethanol is made from corn. Erupt. Ethanol is usually made from sugar cane. The ground in hot springs. Soybean plants like these, which is as well as waste oils and several and other plants that are rich in vegetable oils, and provide raw materials tea. for biodiesel. The bio other main biofuel. Biofuels are special bio fuels are renewable sources of energy because the crops they are made from farms. can be replanted the year main after bio year. Fuel is ethanol, However, and it's in most of the gasoline we cause into some air pollution because they need to in be the burned USA, to release most energy. Ethanol is made from but corn. all in all. But Even though there are some real problems with biofuels, and with nearly all the types of alternative energy we just looked at, like these, they are still as much well as kinder to the environment than fossil fuels, and, rich in and will no doubt completely replace them someday. Bio the other main bio fuel. Bio Since it may be a while before most of our energy the comes from they alternative from and renewable sources, year year. we can still help However, to reduce air pollution by not wasting some energy and by practicing energy conservation. Energy. But all in all, for example, even though there are lots some of electricity made with by pollution burning fossil fuels the would be of saved alternative energy if all the lights at, and computers that are on in the empty rooms of these buildings were turned off. And, will no doubt and if all the old-fashioned incandescent light bulbs were replaced with more efficient compact fluorescent bulbs, like this Since one, may be a while before and most a lot of less gasoline would need to be burned, if people sources, started driving more fuel-efficient vehicles, air and if more people by traveled by mass energy transportation, and by practicing energy the list goes on and on. And you example, can probably think of lots of other ways that people could stop wasting energy too. Fuels would be saved. So remember, if, if you really want to help heal our planet, you can reduce air pollution just by being more careful about how you use energy. Incandescent light bulbs were replaced with more efficient compact fluorescent bulbs, like this one. And a lot less gasoline would need to be burned if people started driving more fuel-efficient vehicles and if more people traveled by mass transportation. The list goes on and on, and you can probably think of lots of other ways that people could stop wasting energy too. So remember, if you really want to help heal our planet, you can reduce so air what? pollution just mm -hmm. by being so more careful about how you, you use energy. When you were watching the video, what are some things that you could potentially do to help the environment out. Okay. That's a great one. So my friend just said, be careful with how you use energy. Um, that definitely applies. Um,
Yeah, so we need to find a way to use a different resource than burning, right? Um, we burn, my house, we burn wood, right? And if we're not burning wood, then we're burning natural gas. And both of those are non-renewable resources. Yep. Yep. So there are we have some companies that are going solar and a lot of the way they their energy works is it's solar energy, right? <laughs> So that, uh, my friend just made a really good point and said, Ms. Richardson, you really got to think because you, somebody has to charge the car. And the other piece that has been a hiccup in Michigan has been, um, one of the hiccups in Michigan specifically is, so one of my friends said with electric cars, Ms. Richardson, um, you have to be able to charge it. Um, with solar cars, they use solar energy, but got to be honest, how often do we see the sun in the wintertime? Not much. Like, I was so giddy the other day when I told you, went by the bank of windows, and I'm like, whoa, this is the sun! Oh my gosh, it's the sun! And so... We in Michigan don't see the sun very often. I remember um, when I was in college, I was doing a science experiment. And the science experiment, the, the teacher said, go out and look at the moon every night. Okay? And so what we were supposed to do, so you're supposed to go out at the same time every night. I think I picked like 10 o'clock at night. And every day you were supposed to draw the moon in relation to something else. So I go out the first night and the moon is like right here in my house, right? And then I go out the next night and I can't find the moon, it's too dark. Then I go out the next night and can't find the moon, it's too dark. And so like more than half the time, probably two-thirds or three-fourths of the time, you couldn't see the moon because it was so cloudy, you couldn't see the moon. So my going out at 10 p.m., my professor said after like 20 days, just forget about it. There's no point in continuing the thing. What you should have seen was, and then he went in to explain what we should have seen. But, um, but we have a lot of clouds in Michigan, so clouds really are going to really play into it. Um, so solar means sun. Um, soul might be, soul might be the Greek or Latin root. Um, that would not surprise me. But yeah, so sun and in Michigan we have a problem with doing the sun because the cl it's so cloudy out. We have turbines we've put up in the last few years that helps with um, electrical. Yeah, we have a lot of turbines. Yep, they're still putting them up. Right, so you can change your light bulbs. It doesn't necessarily have to be the curly ones, but there are definitely. So, um, Ms. Richardson's runaround is some light bulbs. Um, some light bulbs will, uh, like, so it says, I get lamps, and the lamp will say, oh, you can only put 75 watts on there. Well, the new light bulbs, the 75 watts are a lot less, so I can have a brighter light with less watts. Um, when watts is wattage, how bright they are. Um, when I went to change my car lights the other day, um, I could have had the traditional light bulbs for my car, or I could have 
I could pay more money and get light bulbs that last longer. Like LED? Yeah, so I paid more money to, for my lights to last longer. Yeah, so we we could do some hydropower. Hydropower means you need water, a water source. So they could do some hydropower in Elma potentially. They have a dam built, but I don't know that they use their dam for hydropower. Um, we use some turbines. So I'll put our little turbine pictures in there. There's like usually three blades on a turbine. What? Yeah, so planting more trees will help. Um, you know, I think, you know, what, what was really interesting, though, at the beginning of the pandemic was because nobody was driving, nobody was going anywhere, you know, only um, mandatory workers were allowed out of the house. Remember that? Um, everybody was home. What happened was that a lot of the smog and water and stuff like that cleared up naturally. Because um, there weren't people out running around and the people that were out were the necessary people. A lot of, the, a lot of our issues really kind of cleared up at the beginning of the pandemic because people were pretty much grounded to the house, right? Yes. Um, we went back to our ways and you know we started having some of the same issues. But, you know, we've talked about it. This year we've had more tornadoes, right? I think we've had more severe weather than ever I ever remember. Um, we've had mudslides. Um, we've had fires out west. Um, and they're just, they've just been really horrific. Um, things that you don't expect to see in places you don't expect to see them. And... Uh, so yeah, so conservative, conserving stuff is a pretty big deal. We are going to move over and we're going to read a book and then we're going to chit chat about that. So let me get the books going. She's wearing a dead bird on her head. This is by Catherine Lasky. It's illustrated by David Catro. Um, so hopefully I can still see without them. Turn to see if I can still see without it. Yep. All right. I still have a glare. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, Harriet Hemsway, Hemsway was a very proper boss lady. She never talked with her mouth full. That's funny. Hang on, I'm turning it so I can see a bit better. All right. There we go. She never talked with her mouth full, but one day she almost did. Standing by the bay window in her parlor. Here she is, standing by the bay window in her parlor. Maybe. Oh, it was going to be a cathedral window. Uh, standing by the bay window in her parlor, she had just bit in, into a jam cookie when her eyes sprang open in dismay. She gasped, <gasps> leaned forward, and swallowed, and then turned to her parlor maid. She's a dead bird on her head. Feathers on ladies' hats were becoming more and more popular. At first, hats have been decorated with just feathers, and then designers began to add pairs of wings. But this woman had an entire bird perched on atop her hat. Harriet squinted her eyes as the lady of fashion walked proudly by. Arctic turn, I believe, Harriet whispered. Looks ready to fly away, said the parlor maid. It won't, Harriet replied sadly. So this is an arctic turn on her ha hat. Harriet 
felt that she had to do something. Huge populations of birds, from egrets to pheasants to owls to warblers, were being... Let me see if I can get you the other page first. There we go. Can I give you an idea? Um... We're being slaughtered for hat decoration. None were spared, not even pigeons. But what could she do? Women in 1896. So this is just before Anne of Green Gables was written. So this is about seven, 11 years before Anne of Green Gables was written, okay? Um, 1896 had a very little power. They could not vote, and many had husbands who dealt them to make decisions for themselves. Some women were not even allowed to read newspapers. Harriet's husband, Augustus, did not treat her this way. But she and other women... like her, wanted to change things for all women. And she wanted to do something for the birds. Fashion was killing birds as well as killing women's chances to have the right to vote and be listened to. For who would listen to a woman with a dead bird on her head? And if the senseless slaughter for silly fashion was not stopped in a few years, the birds with the prettiest feathers would all be dead, gone, forever, extinct. I must call Cousin Minna, Harriet said grimly. Okay, here we go. Let's see, that's about it right there. Okay. Click, 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 click. The heels of Miss Minna Hall's High but toned shoes beat a quick rhythm acro across against the bricks of the sidewalk. Her blue eyes were bright and as they searched the bare limbs of the trees that lined the avenue for the yellow finches that appeared like spots of flitting gold on this gray winter day. Their quick golden flight swelled her heart. Click, 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 click. She could not be late for tea at Harriet's. This was too important. Click, 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 click. Miss Hall's feet f froze in their tracks. Straight ahead, there indeed was indeed a pair of golden wings. But they had neither head nor body attached. They were pinned instead to the crown of a lady's hat. And on the brim was a swirl of snowy egret feathers. So here is the bird she's looking for, but it has no head and no body. It just has the wings on the hat. It looks cool, but to get the cool look, you have to kill the bird, right? What? Bustles, yeah. Revolting. The single word rumbled down Commonwealth Avenue as noisily as a cannonball loose on a ship's deck. Me? The fashionable lady squeaked with dismay. You, you heartless creature! That a bird should be slaughtered just to make you feel pretty. Yish! Minna made a scalding sound deep in the back of her throat. Yep, this is a bustle. The bustle shapes the ladies' dresses in, the, in this day and age. When Minna stormed into the parlor, Harriet was preparing tea. Well, Harriet, Minna exclaimed as she pulled off her felt cap. From Arlington Street to Clarendon, three egrets, one marabou, Two grebes, one goldfinch, and Minna paused. Her cousin waited nervously. The teacup chattered on the saucer. She was holding a a hummingbird. 
Oh, no, Minna. Oh, yes, Harriet. Perched in full flight on a bunch of silk roses with a veil. Disgusting. Revolting. Nauseating. Vile. The words flew through the air like red-hot cylinders. Well, let's get down to business, Minna said. Oh, cinders. Sorry. Red-hot cinders. Well, let's get down to business, Minna said. Do you have the book? So somebody had a hummingbird. Now look at this. They have birds hanging in their, in their room. So it must mean they really enjoy birds. And I don't know enough bird names to be saying what they're saying, right? Yes, right here. Harriet Hemway walked over to the shelf in the parlor and took down a large blue volume. The word Boston Social Register was written across the cover in gold letters the book was a list of the grandest families in boston they opened the book and with pencils in hand they began to scan the list of families starting with a mrs appleton quite fashionable indeed a pea fowl with a few warbler feathers at tea last week bancroft marabou fan and hat to match at the opera Finally, they got to Z. Mrs. Z Zach Zacharias. Egrets and warblers with a touch of flamingo, I do believe. Luncheon at the Somerset Hotel. So they're going down through the list and trying to figure out who's wearing birds on their heads, right? The I've ever seen. Like the and then Dear dear minna moaned and sipped the last of her tea what shall we do well harriet scratched her head we have garden clubs and history clubs why not form a bird club not just to watch birds no but to protect them and stop this senseless murdering for fashion what a wonderful idea said minna let's do it let's start a club for the birds what Nope. They are killing them, stuffing them like a stuffed deer head or whatever, and then they're putting them on their hats. Um, what a wonderful idea, said Minna. Let's do it. Let's start a club for the birds. Right then and there, they began to write letters to all of the Boston ladies of fashion who wore the plumage of birds, imploring them to put aside their fancy hats with swirls of owl feathers, breasts of grebes, wings of hummingbirds, and plumes of egrets, and instead join a society dedicated to protecting all birds. This was the first informal meeting of the Audubon Society, named after a man they admired, John Audubon, the famous painter of birds. He's a true guy, J John, John Audubon, and it is true they have an Audubon society that protects birds. Um, part of it, part of it, yeah. Harriet and Minna were very persuasive. They convinced women not only that killing birds was wrong, but that birds as hat decorations made women look silly. Soon many of the fashionable ladies of Boston to whom they had written letters did join the society. Hang on, I gotta focus. For the club to accomplish its goals, however, Harriet and Minna also knew it also needed men. Smart, powerful men who could vote and go into public places like the state legislature and the halls of Congress in Washington, D.C. So they asked lawyers and doctors, sportsmen, and bird experts to join, too. At the second meeting of the Audubon Society, 
Harriet and Minna and the new members made up rules for their club. I think, I think, said one gentleman, that there should be an exception made for ducks. What, ki what kind of exception, Harriet asked. We want to hunt them, replied another gentleman. Rules are rules, fumed Minna. Sportsmen aren't special, another. Oh, sportsmen aren't special, another woman said, and stamped her foot. The women won. There would be no killing of ducks or game birds. Then all the members devised a plan to get the word out on bird on birds to everyone, and the bird hat ca campaign of the Audubon Society began in earnest. His hair is so funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Miss Richardson's hair looks like after she's put a hat on. They decided to bring their cause to the children of the state of Massachusetts. So into the schools they went, Minna, Harriet, and other members of the society. In Florida, heaps of birds stripped of their feathers are left dying on the ground, Harriet told one class of children, holding up a photograph of a pile of dead egrets. What happened to their babies, the ones left in the nest, a student asked. The ones that were too young to fly off are left to die. So you see, we need your help. The birds need your help to protect them against the plume hunters. Remember we talked about plumes are uh, 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 birds. Fe feathers. feathers against the plume hunters and the hat makers. Please join our club. Soon there were over 10,000 junior members or children of the Audubon Society in the state of Massachusetts and Audubon societies were formed in other states more children joined. The membership in Boston continued to grow and the meetings were always lively. The orange groves in Florida this year are suffering because there are too many dead hummingbirds on hats and not enough in groves eating the pests that spoil the fruit. That's really interesting because it had an impact on farming also, right? Son, Miss Harriet Richards, the secretary of the society. Let's get the farmers on our side. Send out a letter, Minna said. Do have some more apple pie harry offered and be happy did i skip a page no and be happy it's not a songbird pie a specialty in some places i'm told um wasn't it what um sing a song of six pence a pocket full of rye Four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. When the pie was open, the birds began to sing. Wasn't that a silly sight to set before the king? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all of the members stopped eating and looked at the apple pie on their plates. Ghastly, whispered Mr. William Brewster. And for one awful minute, they all imagined songbirds instead of apples in their pies. Warblers, nightingales, and robins. I think, said Minna, slowly setting down her plate, we better start getting some laws passed. In the club, everybody was equal. The women and the men of the society wrote up their ideas together. Then they sent the gentlemen to talk to the legislatures in the house, state house and to members of Congress in Washington, D.C. to press for the passage of laws to save the birds. They were successful. An act was passed in 1903 to protect herons and bitterns, two popular hat birds from hat makers, forbidding them to sell, displace, display, or possess the feathers. In 1904, there was another victory when the law was passed to protect shore, marsh, and beach birds. 
What? Soon there were also laws against hunting birds during their breeding seasons, and then a federal law was passed preventing the import importation of feathers from Europe and the trophies for hats. The word about birds had spread all the way to, the, to England, where Queen Victoria had announced that she would never again wear a feather for fashion. But Minna and Harriet were still far from happy. What good is a law if it isn't enforced, Minna moaned one day as she stood looking out the window at a woman passing by with a pheasant's wing taking the air above her taking the air above her. You can't arrest the lady for wearing the hat, but you can arrest the squire for the feather, Harriet said. She tapped her head lightly as if to give a little jostle to her brains. There are rumors about secret feather warehouses, she spoke softly. I think we should make a few inqu inquiries. Okay. So the two ladies, so the two ladies with Harriet's husband, Augustus, took the train to New York City, where they were not so well known. They got as gussied up as two Boston ladies who loved birds and hated fashion could manage. They sashayed down Fifth Avenue in fancy dresses and wore elaborate hats with streamers and ribbons, but no feathers. Into the fanciest hat store, the two cousins and Augustus Herman Way pranced. Okay, so they're going to look for feathers. All right, here we go. I want to I want to buy a hat for my wife and dear cousin, each a hat with a feathered hat, Augustus announced. The salespeople began fluttering around the pro prosperous looking threesome. What will it be, madam? Egrets or doves? A dear little cloche covered with owl feathers or this broad brimmed hat with the Arctic turn? Is it not spectacular on the blue felt just as it is plunging into the sea? The two ladies swallowed their disgust and muffled their anger. After all, there were more important things at stake. By the end of the shopping expedition, they, alas, had to buy two hats. But they also had the name of the feather supplier with a warehouse in Baltimore where millions of dead birds and tons of plumes were stored. With this information, they went directly to the authorities. Dun, 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 dun. So, yeah, he is kind of silly, isn't he? Soon after, on a rainy May day, the cousin sat sipping tea. Harriet had just bitten into a crisp wafer when, a, when like a tidal wave, Augustus burst into the parlor. Ladies? He held a newspaper loft in his hand. You've won. We what? said Minna. She and Harriet held, her, held their breath. One, dear cousin and dear wife, 26,000 illegal gull skins detained, destined for hats of fashion were seized last night from the Baltimore warehouse. They have shut it down, taken the skins, and arrested the owner. Augustus paused, his rain slicked, face beamed with pride. The law has been enforced. <laughs> what? Minna looked at her cousin. Harriet, we won. But Harriet said nothing. For Harriet Hemingway never spoke with her mouth full, even when she won. Look at the bird coming out of the painting. Why? All right. Shh. 
Author's note, Harriet Hemingway, 1858 to 1960. Oh my gosh, she lived to be like 102 years old. And Minna Hall, 19, 1859 to 1951. So she was 90 something when she died. Were real people. All the other people mentioned by name in this story were also real and members of the Audubon Society. Much of the information on early activities pursued by the society was gathered by reviewing archival material at the Audubon headquarters in Lincoln, Massachusetts. At the turn of the century, there were many women like Harriet and Minna who wanted to participate more widely in society. In particular, they wanted the right to vote. Such women were smart enough to realize that if they wished to be taken seriously, having a dead bird perched on their hat would not further their cause. The bird hat protest movement became linked in subtle ways with suffragette, the right of voting. I based elements on my story on ideas presented by Jennifer Price's When Women Were Women, Men Were Men, and Birds Were Hats, which eloquently described the links between the two movements in this country. It should be noted that there is no confirmed record of Harriet and Minna ever going into a hat store to buy hats to determine the source of the illegal plume trade. There were stories, however, of their finding out about an illegal warehouse. I took the liberty of imagining how they might have come upon such information. It did not seem plausible to me, given the society conventions of the time, that these two well-bred, gentle but determined women would set out alone to track down the culprits. A more reasonable course of action, I felt, was one in which they might visit a hat store in the company of Harriet's husband and ask some leading questions. All the other incidents in this book are based on true events. Harriet and Minna were not the first people to become involved in bird protection, and the Massachusetts Audubon Society was not the first Audubon Society. It was, however, the first that endured and had impact. It is generally recognized that the Massachusetts organization started by Harriet and Minna was the driving force behind the bird protection movement and the most effective in terms of its impact on legislation and education and of the heightening the awareness of the general public to the environmental concerns. The society will still exist and aside from working on a broad range of areas concerning the environment, it has most recently been responsible for reintroducing endangered and threatened populations, including such species as the Pingree, falcon, the bald eagle, the loon, and the osprey. Um, so what I want you to do, job number one, I want you to think about, um, I want you to think about, um, you know, where would we be if women hadn't stepped up and hadn't involved other people to, to stop the bird massacre? Um, and that's really what it was, killing all the birds. Um, this is one way, and this was protecting the, what, what sphere would this be protecting? The biosphere. The biosphere, because the birds are part of the biosphere. And honestly, we are all interconnected. Um, you know, when the bees died off, there was a bunch of bees that died off recently. When the bees died off, that meant our farmer's fields didn't get um, pollinated, which meant we don't have food to eat. So we are all connected, whether we like it or not, we are all connected. Um, I want you to start creatively thinking, like, what could you do? What could we do as a class or what could we do as a bigger society? What could we do to help the spheres, the four spheres, the hydrosphere, the atmosphere, the geosphere, and the biosphere? What could we do? What could you do? that you are not doing right now. One of them is simply what? Shutting off the water when you're brushing your teeth or turning off lights when we leave the room or those kinds of things. I do, I do that um, because I'm bored and I need electricity you will, you will be responsible for taking an AR test on this book. And any other questions, comments, concerns? Ooh, that's a great idea.
What? I'm gently like. She can't, you know, it's a good connection. Minna does sound like Marilla, like not only in the name, but the way they act. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.